Hello everyone and welcome back to Starship Station Construction in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the previous video we had left a Kerbal floating outside in space with nowhere to go. There is a Starship in space but there is no seat for that Kerbal and the Kerbal is running out of supplies so I decided to send a small version of my Lynx spacecraft atop a Atlas V rocket. I understand there is one available to go rescue the Kerbal. We are launching from Kuru because it was faster to get to the Kerbal in question launching from Kuru and the Kerbal only has one day worth of supplies. So the small Lynx spacecraft in this case is a pass-through compatible spacecraft meaning that Kerbals can float inside and we're launching it with a single booster Atlas V and yeah basically it's a four meter capsule instead of the normal Lynx which is a five meter one so the normal Lynx can carry four Kerbals and is about equivalent to an Orion spacecraft and the, this particular Lynx can carry three and is about equivalent to an Apollo. But of course the service module is not the Apollo service module, it's meant for low Earth orbit, so I decided to use the service module from the Gaganyan spacecraft from India. And so that is what we've got going there. And I do deorbit the Centaur stage. And there you see the service module as we rendezvous with our target Kerbal. The wayward Kerbal is Elster Kerman, and it does take us some time to get to Elster, so it's a good thing we launched from Kuru, otherwise we would have been late. Uh, we basically were right on time. <laughs> and so here I am opening the top for Elster to float in. You can sort of see the seats in there. And here Elster is making use of his remaining supplies to get inside the spacecraft. You can see only a little bit of EVA propellant there and even less oxygen, water, and food. So here we go. I thought about doing something else with the spacecraft, but actually the rendezvous, because we needed to hurry, uh, the rendezvous took a lot, lot more Delta V, so I just brought Elster back. So this has been a non-Starship portion of the Starship station construction, but necessary, making sure that our Kerbals remain safe. There goes the service module, and here it goes through the atmosphere. This is actually the first test of this particular Lynx spacecraft, the small version. Uh, obviously I'd used the, well not so obviously, uh, if you hadn't watched the videos, it's been a while since I used the full-size Lynx spacecraft, but I've used it a lot in previous series. Anyway, so here we are. Uh, for some reason this one module on the station had not been attached when I reloaded the save. We had attached it in the previous episode, but it was floating around. So I brought back in, docked it, and I decided that we could deorbit two of the tugs. We didn't have much fuel left in them, and I didn't think they would be necessary. The one starship that was already in orbit uh, did not have the ability to dock to the station. We didn't have the docking port in the right place. So I decided to try to bring it back with Barbert there. And this is risky because the fin actuation doesn't quite work right. And ultimately, even though I try to manually act, uh, actuate the fins to the right angle, uh, I don't really know how to control its pitch yawn roll. To be honest, I have no idea. I'm used to planes. Planes do things completely differently. Uh, what the actuation system here is supposed to be like, I couldn't figure out. All, all I was tr really trying to do is make sure that the center mass and center lift were in the right place with respect to each other. But that was not enough. You can see, uh, well, it goes all over the place. So, yeah. Yes, it is a tough thing to bring these suckers down. I trust SpaceX actually does have it figured out. And again, I've seen other people make it work though I'm not entirely sure how. Uh, the critical region between 40 and 80 kilometers is a tricky business. It's mostly about balance, but Sasha doesn't have very good roll control either. So anyway, uh, lighting the engines was a no-go because we were spinning and the fuel is unsettled. It doesn't work. So I couldn't light the engines. Fortunately, we weren't going very fast. You can see only 40-ish meters per second. So Barbert has hope. I thought about parachuting Barbert down, but I thought that if I tried to get Barbert out of his seat, um, Barbert would just go poof and not exist anymore. I've had that happen in the Shinkansen before. Might not happen here, but it was risky, so I decided not to try that. And basically Kerbal buoyancy glitchiness saved the situation. 
That's it. Just kept spinning. Eventually, I think I recovered. Managed to recover it by mashing the recover vessel button. Okay, so here we are launching a starship that can dock to the station. This has Karori and Joan Kerman, and they will clean up some of the decouplers that are still attached to the station modules, the Destiny modules that I have there. Those adapted from NASA's own model of the International Space Station. Here we are reserving fuel in the Super Heavy so that I can return uh, to actually Kuru in this case. I had not changed the launch site. We launched from Kuru for the rescue mission for Elster, but I hadn't changed the launch site. So we, ha we happened to be launching a starship from Kuru for some reason. I did decide to carry some more EVA propellant, but for some reason the containers with EVA propellant didn't weren't full of EVA propellant. That's why we have uh, a sort of shortage up there in the resource list. And I saw no way in the VAB to fill them up, but it's weird. So I didn't quite understand that with the EVA propellant canisters. Uh, this is 1.8.1. These are not the stock canisters. These are KIS EVA propellant canisters. So. I really need some way of holding a large amount of EVA propellant because the Kerbals with this pass-through system do a whole lot of stuff floating around using the, a the EVA packs, but the procedural tanks don't have a way to put EVA propellant in them, at least in this version, so that was a problem. My only option was those KIS tanks. Okay, well anyway, we have docked. That is not trivial. I decided to try out the first-person view for the EVA. That, uh, well, initially I had a little bit of trouble getting myself oriented, but ultimately I managed it. So there's Joan Kerman's view here as I float through Starship, the various decks. The decks are 2.4 meters apart. It's all human sized, so relatively big for a Kerbal. Those are windows. Those are the windows of the model. Uh, on the outside, you can't look in, but from the inside, you can look out, which makes for, well, it's a nice view. And then down to the airlock deck. So this deck, the outside hatch opens when the inside hatch closes. So we have to do that uh, clicking on the vessel. And here, Joan is now in third person view. And we are going to go into the station proper. The interior is part of the NASA model of the ISS, in this case, the Destiny module. And there are minor flaws, like uh, some polygons are in fact missing here and there. Yeah, I point those out. I'll have to try and fix those. They're a little bit awkward. Our immersion is lost. We have, of course, technically just none of this is pressurized or uh, even pretend pressurized right now. We have gaps, as you can see there. There needs to be a hatch there or we need to dock something. The next starship will bring up the hatches so that we can seal those off. Normally, station modules are not sent up with uh, uh, sent up depressurized. They're generally pressurized, so this is unusual. But uh, we're doing it. Uh, so there was a little bit of a float there through Harmony into the quest airlock, and then I have Joan go outside. Joan did pick up a drill and will do some work out here. It's always fun actually exiting the spacecraft like this instead of through the hatch. And Joan is going to hunt for those decouplers that we need to remove. It's also fun to see a starship docked like this. We will expand the station. Uh, that will continue into another video and further. But here we are just doing some cleanup. And so that decoupler needs to be disassembled. Poof. As far as the ISS modules, I've adapted Destiny, Harmony, Quest, uh, Columbus, and Leonardo. So those five modules so far. I've got one of my Canada tugs right there, and there's another one on the other side of the Harmony module. We need to move those and grab the two Destiny modules that are not attached to the Starship, so the ones that we're facing right now, and turn them a little bit next, because they're currently not lined up properly with the rest of the station, so that's the next thing to do. But first, we get to enjoy the, the recreation deck just briefly. I did, there's not much here, but I did take the computers out of the ISS 
uh, model. That's, those are from NASA and uh, put them here. And I also took the Colbert exercise machine and put one of those here. We could put a few more if uh, people need them. But I decided one would do for now, just to demonstrate that I can. Could be other things that we place around here too, counters and such. And here, a brief look outside the main windows in the cockpit, though only visible from the upper deck and not the actual control deck, which is the middle deck. Um, so Joan gets to enjoy that. For some reason, whenever I have a Kerbal seated on the upper deck, though, uh, maybe it's only on the uh, outside seats, but when they leave the seat, they tend to clip into the side of the starship and then go poof. They, they die. So the upper deck may be a little bit dangerous as far as having a seat there. Best to just visit. Anyway, I get the tugs over to those destiny modules so that we can turn them. Only possible now because Starship is holding on to the rest of the station. Before, the tugs were the only control on the station. So only with a Starship docked could we do this. We'll later have to put on a more permanent controller. I decided to take a look at the docking sequence from inside. You can see we're actually approaching... Uh, I couldn't zoom any further than this, but we're approaching those other modules like that. You can see inside the modules, and now we can verify that we are lined up, or at least not askew in an awkward angle. And so here we go, and... docked. So there we go. Anyway, so that is the progress that I have to report in this video as we reorient the station so that it's a little bit more pleasant to look at, I guess. I guess having the Starship Point prograde is best for drag, I don't know. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.